Hi everyone. During the current coronavirus pandemic, significant emphasis has been placed on the importance of mitigating mesothelial spread of the coronavirus region. One important consideration involves the appropriate use of personal protective equipment which reduces the healthcare provider's likelihood of becoming infected and it also minimizes exposure to the other patients at the care hall. This might reduce the demands placed on the healthcare system and also help in preserving the workforce. It has been demonstrated that inadequate education and training can significantly impact the compliance with PPE recommendations. Myself, Dr. Sandhya, Professor in the Department of Anesthesiology, BMCI Super Specialty Hospital, in my presentation, I'm going to highlight the technique regarding the donning and the doffing of the PPE because it is very crucial for the protection of those who don it. Personal protective equipment or the PPE is the protective clothing, helmet, goggles, mask or any garment or equipment designed to protect the wearer's body from the infectious agent or the coronavirus. Any item of the PPE imposes a physical barrier between the wearer or the user and the working environment. So every component of the PPE needs to protect the surface of the healthcare provider who comes in contact with the patient, like the gloves protecting the hand, the gown or the apron protecting the skin, or the clothing, that is the surgical scrub worn beneath, the mask and the respirator protecting the mouth and the nose, knowing well that the respiratory tract is the conduit for the airborne infectious agent, the goggles to protect the eyes, the face shield to protect the face, the mouth, the nose and the eye. So who needs to use the personal protective equipment? The use of PP is crucial for healthcare workers, the social service workers and the other first responders in the emergency medical unit because they perform direct patient care and routinely have prolonged and direct contact with patients with possible or confirmed COVID-19 infection and they routinely come in contact with the blood or the factors influencing the type of PP selected or the components of the PP which needs to be done depends on the type of the exposure and also the category of the isolation which the healthcare provider is going to visit. So there is a difference when the healthcare provider is exposed to a splash or a spray or aerosol versus a simple touch points which we need to know before learning the proper technique of donning of the PP is we need to don the PP before we come in contact with the patient that is generally before entering the room. We also need to be careful that we not only protect ourselves while wearing the PP but we also should see to it that the PP doesn't become a source of contamination to the other healthcare provider. We need to remove and discard the PP carefully either immediately outside the patient room or in a designated area provided and we should remove the respirator only after we come out of the isolation room. Hand hygiene has to be practiced after every step of donning and doffing. Sequence for donning the PP is as follows. The gown is to be worn first, the mask or the respirator next, the goggles or the face shield and this comes the glove. While selecting a gown, we need to ensure that the type and the size of the gown is appropriate for the healthcare provider. The opening is provided at the back and ties are provided so that it is secured at the neck and the waist. If you feel the gown is too small or too tight, it is important to use two gowns so that you are protected completely. The first gown is tied in the front while the second gown is tied. The proper technique of donning a mask is by placing the mask securely over the nose, the mouth and the chin and the fit flexible nose piece is placed over the nose bridge. The, and it, the mask is then secured on the head with the ties or the elastic bands provided and is adjusted to fit comfortably. While selecting a particulate respirator, we should ensure that it is a fit tested NIOSH approved N95 mask. Again, this mask is securely placed over the nose, the mouth and the chin completely covering it and the fit flexible nose piece is placed over the nose bridge. It should be fitted to the nose using both the hands and it should not be pinched, bent or tented with one hand. And again, the mask is secured on the head with elastic bands. After
after we wear the uh, particulate respirator, we need to perform a fit check. When we take an inhalation, the respirator should collapse. And when we exhale, there should be no leak around the face. At any given point of time, the respirator of the face mask should not be pulled beneath the chin or stored in the scrub pocket. Next comes the donning of the eye and the face protective equipment. The goggles are positioned over the eye and secured to the head using the eyepiece of the headband. The face shield is then placed over the face and secured on the brow with the headband. Both of them are adjusted to fit completely. And last comes the glove. As in the case of the gown, it is important to choose the correct type and size of the glove so as to prof uh, perform the procedures comfortably. The hands are inserted into the glove and the gloves are extended over the isolation gown top so that no part of the body. Summarizing the steps of donning, scrubs to be worn beneath the PPE, proper hand hygiene is to be performed, a surgical cap is worn to protect the hair, and then the gown, next comes the mask, and then the gloves in the end. A few key points of how to safely use the PPE. At any given point of time, the gloved hand should remain away from the face, we should avoid touching or adjusting the other parts of the PPE and if at all we feel the glove safety is breached or a stone, it is compulsory to perform a hand hygiene before donning a new pair of glove. The surfaces and the items in the patient care area should not be touched or the touch should be limited. And now coming to the proper technique of donning or safely removing with the PPE. We need to know which is the clean and the contaminated area of the PPE. The contaminated area is nothing but the outside front of the gown, that is the area of the PPE, which is likely to have come in contact with the body sites, the materials or the environmental surfaces where the infectious organism may reside. While the clean area is the inside part of the gown, the outside back and the ties on the head and the back. These are the areas of the PP which are not likely to have come in contact with the infectious organism. So when we follow the sequence of the steps of the correct technique of doffing of the PPE, we should know that we should not be touching the contaminated area of the gown and we should be touching only the clean areas. So coming to the sequence of removing the PPE, it is gloves first, the face shield or the goggles next, the gown and then last comes the we should be doffing the PPE at the doorway before leaving the patient room or in a designated anteroom provided while we remove the respirator only after we leave the room after the door has been closed. It is compulsory to ensure that hand hygiene techniques are performed at each step of doffing and before doffing it is equally important to ensure that these hand hygiene facilities are available at every point needed. Coming to the proper technique of removing the glove, the first glove is grasped outside near the wrist and peeled away from the hand, turning the glove inside out. This is held by the opposite gloved hand. While removing the second glove, the glove ungloved finger slides under the wrist of the remaining glove and peeled off from inside, creating a bag for both the gloves. And both the gloves are discarded in the designated bin provided. While removing the goggle or the face shield, the ear or the headpiece has to be grasped with the ungloved hand, lifted away from the face and placed in the designated receptacle either for reprocessing or for disposal. While removing the isolation gown, we need to unfasten the tie ties, that is the clean area of the gown and the gown is peeled away from the neck and the shoulder. The contaminated outside surface is turned inside folded and rolled into a bundle and discarded into the designated area provided. But what happens if the gloves are removed first? The hands must be touching only the uncontaminated surface of the gown. The gown is then peeled down from the body and then the gown is balled or rolled in the contaminated surfaces and then discarded. The preferred method for doffing a disposable gown and glove together is Break the ties at the neck by pulling on the upper front portion of the gown with the hand which is still gloved and then balling or rolling in the contaminated surfaces and pulling the glove off the inside out as the hands are withdrawn from the gown sleeves. 
the gown and the glove can then be placed in a disposable receptacle together. Next, coming to the uh, technique of removing a mask, the bottom tie is first unfastened and then the top tie. The mask is then removed from the face and discarded. The same technique for removing the particulate respirator. The bottom elastic is lifted over the head first and then the top elastic is lifted and the mask is uh, disposed. As highlighted earlier, it is important to perform hand hygiene immediately after removing the PPE. If the hands become visibly contaminated during any step during the PPE removal, hand hygiene is to be performed before continuing to remove the PPE. So, please ensure that these facilities are available at the point needed before you go on to drop your personal protective equipment. Various videos have been uploaded on YouTube highlighting the proper technique of donning and doffing and here are mentioned a few links which will take you to these videos which all of you can go through. Thank you.